18th of June 2023 second video today this might be a short video I just want to set the scene today when I was sitting in a quotes church service I was listening that is my participation to listen moved in the spirit to write things down to assess things to test and weigh and to write things down sadly there was no opportunity to give to give for, there was no opportunity for a prophecy to be given or a word of knowledge and uh, so that moment passed but i did have a word which is a word of the obvious really for those of us who are mature in all these things that without the shedding of blood there can be no remission for sin and why that was a necessary now word was because the gospel was talked about but as far as i'm aware there was no mention of the need for the cleansing by the blood of jesus christ which is a very strange thing to say when you're talking about the gospel because that is the very nub of the truth without the shedding of blood there can be no remission for sin now the inference was there somebody said there was well it was inferred well i'm sorry the gospel is not something that's inferred on people the gospel is preached and the truth is told that jesus christ died and he was pierced he was wounded he was beaten up this is the gospel but it's like this is too graphic for a sunday morning well i can understand that if there are young children present of course they go out for, to their sunday school but for adults the true gospel is a horrific a horrific story a horrific story how jesus christ was punished for our sins my sins and his blood was shed on different occasions before he was crucified his blood was shed punched whipped the crown of thorns carrying the cross falling down under the weight of the cross damaging his knees the blood was shed before jesus christ was even pierced and wounded on the cross and of course the, the person didn't go into any detail in, in that sense but there there was as far as i'm aware no mention of the blood of jesus christ and and the lord gave me an encouragement if they allowed for a prophecy to be given if they allowed for two minutes of silence for the lord to speak to somebody not necessarily me then that would have been brought out and it wouldn't have taken two minutes it would have taken 30 seconds without the shedding of blood there can be no remission for sin and so now let's just thank jesus for dying for us and thank the father for sending his only begotten son to die for us the lamb of god who was sacrificed and the blood of the lamb cleanses us from all sin and that statement would be would have been made and people would have said yes amen or nodded or some agreement but of course that word wasn't given out publicly because there was no opportunity for the holy spirit to speak there was no two minutes silence not to remember the dead but to remember that jesus christ is living and active and can speak if we allow him to through prophecy or words of wisdom words of knowledge teaching etc so i intend to do another video because um on this theme about who jesus is the real jesus and he is not an anglican jesus he's not a catholic jesus a baptist methodist He's not a Quaker Jesus because the Quakers have their own view of Jesus Christ as much as the Muslims, as much as the Jews 
have a view of Messiah, but they don't recognize Messiah is Jesus Christ. So all these denominations have a version of Jesus Christ that is unique to their denomination. And of course, within the denomination, there are many versions, subversions, if you like, of Jesus Christ, defined individually by people in that denomination. And in a local church of a hundred people in the congregation, there might well be a hundred different versions of Jesus Christ in the minds of the congregation of the local church. But of course we know there is only one true Christ. And when we start to examine who this true Christ is, we can see he's not any Christ that man has defi defined for himself in any religion. So obviously the Mormon Jesus Christ is not the real Jesus Christ. Because the Mormon so-called Christian church is a cult with a false Christ. It cannot be overstated. And, and the Mormons should change the, the name of their so-called church, the church of the false Jesus Christ and the so-called Latter-day Saints. So the Jehovah's Witnesses have a false Jesus Christ. And they believe he's a created angel. But of course, we know Jesus is not created. He's the only begotten son of God the Father, the uncreated creator himself, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So we know that Jesus Christ, the real Lord Jesus Christ, the King, the Master, the Teacher, the Saviour, is not any Jesus Christ so-called according to man's definition of Jesus Christ, whether that man is a religious man, a secular man, an atheist man, or a political man. Because some people see Jesus Christ as a politician, as an ideology, an idealist, as a philosopher, but of course, Jesus Christ is none of these man's definitions of who Jesus Christ is. We know, according to Scripture, God has defined who he is for us, for our benefit today. And only those of you with the Holy Spirit really appreciate what I'm talking about, because as many as there are denominations, there are as many versions of Jesus Christ as there are denominations. The real Jesus Christ is the head of the real body of Christ, the only true remnant church of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yahweh, Yeshua Messiah, is the God of the body of Christ, the only true head. In him we live and breathe and we have our being. So I'm going to close it here because what I did today during the service, still listening, my participation is to listen to what is being said, even what is being sung, and I will sing as led by the Holy Spirit as my personal worship to God, the real God, Father, in spirit and in truth. And whilst the service was going on, I was writing something down, what I call a mind map, where I put Jesus Christ in the middle of the page, and around him I put all the different types of um, adjectives, if you like. What sort of Jesus do you follow? Well, I follow an Anglican Jesus. I follow a Baptist Jesus. I, I follow a charismatic Jesus. I follow a Pentecostal Jesus. And there must be 20, 30 different categories of different types of, quotes, Jesus, which Jesus said himself, there will be many false Christs in the last days. False apostles, false prophets, 
false Christs, false teachers, false shepherds, and therefore false churches. And of course, there is the apost apost apostate, an apostate version of Jesus Christ, where apparently their Jesus Christ is more than happy with their apostasy. And of course, God is not, not accepting anybody who's an apostate. The glory of God has departed from any denomination which is apostate. And they don't know. They don't know. No more than Laodicea understood that Jesus Christ was outside their meeting, knocking on the door to get into their meeting. The Spirit of God was knocking on the door of the lukewarm Laodiceans, the lukewarm church of today. They don't know God is outside their so-called religious feasts, their so-called religious festivals, their so-called religious ceremonies, rituals. God is outside all of that. But they don't hear him knocking, as the Laodiceans did not hear the Spirit of God knocking on the outside of their, the door to their meeting. God, God wants hot or cold, but with the lukewarm, he spits it out of his mouth as vomit. That's the scripture. So today, I prayed for all the Christian churches right across this world to allow God, the Holy Spirit, to speak during the, the two-minute silence was not a maximum, it was a minimum, uh, at least a two-minute silence in church programs, church orders of service, to have a two-minute silence, allowing Jesus, God, to speak to every individual something for them. Every individual. And that at the end of the two minutes or thereabouts, a person would say, has anybody got anything to share that the Lord has given them? A word of knowledge, word of wisdom, word of teaching, a prophecy, or whatever. Whatever. And I pray that will increase, not just on a Sunday morning, but during the prayer meetings, during uh, discussions of, of uh, what's going on in the local church, amongst the leaders, that they will get into the good habit of being quiet before God, the Holy Spirit. God bless you, brethren of the one God. I'm not with Trevor tomorrow, it's Monday. I'm hoping to reach out, but it will depend on whether a certain brother responds tomorrow morning in the right spirit of humility so that we can submit one to another and reach out in the wonderful gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So pray for us, one day of salvation at a time, as we are praying for you, and keep your comments coming, because we need to share with each other where we are, and we can pray for each other meaningfully. God bless you. Be blessed and pray and receive the Holy Spirit and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy, which goes together with other gifts in your individual but twos and threes. And always reach out with the true gospel of Jesus Christ and never be ashamed of Christ, nor the gospel, nor his name, and make mention of the blood when it's appropriate when it's appropriate because without the shedding of blood there can be no remission for sin god bless you brethren of the one god will speak again according to god's will god bless you